Coming up on Fulton Today, Fulton's Board of Health doctors give its department the 411 on the coronavirus. Details on the county's role with the CDC to contain this now deadly virus. Fulton commissioners make their official legislative ask to state lawmakers will have details. And new details from the Fulton County Sheriff's Office about an old phone scam. That and much more starts right now on Fulton Today. Welcome to Fulton Today, everybody. Fulton leaders share their 2020 legislative agenda to state lawmakers hoping to get support during this General Assembly. So what is the ask? FGTV's Regina Waller has the story. For this first time during the 2020 General Assembly, Fulton leaders presented their legislative agenda to their delegation of lawmakers with an emphasis on the top three legislative priorities. County officials shared that justice reform, the Fulton County Airport, and behavioral and mental health programming are what they most hope will gain support this session. Top of that list is the uh, airport. Um, there's an issue, of course, of what's going to happen to the Fulton Industrial District, whether it's going to go to the city of Atlanta or the new city of South Fulton. Uh, we don't have a dog in that fight. We're concerned about maintaining control of our greatest uh, economic asset, and that is our Fulton County Airport. Over the last year, especially since the adoption of the visioning plan by the Commission uh, last August, we have really kind of laid out a 20-year development plan for the area, and we've developed a lot of momentum, and we really want to see it through, and we're hoping to see it through as unincorporated territory instead of a part of the city. This visit to the Capitol was just one of many by county leaders this session. Earlier in the session, Fulton's chief appraiser presented details of the county's tax digest with the support of commissioners Liz Hausman and Lee Morris. I think they were very receptive. This is a hot button issue and I think it's time that folks start paying attention to uh, the restrictions under which we work where commercial valuation is concerned. We understand that the Board of Assessors in Fulton County is working hard and they want to do their job and get this right, but we also want to make sure that commercial properties in Fulton County are adequately taxed. Sometimes because of the appeals process and other things, the tax falls, the valuation falls below, which shifts the tax burden to single family homeowners. Bottom line, Fulton leaders say they are optimistic that at the end of the 40 day session, Fulton residents will see some positive developments and in the meantime, they will continue to offer legislators whatever information they may need to make the best decision for the constituents that they all serve. We uh, really appreciate the partnership with our legislators um, across Fulton County. Um, we have a very good working relationship and want to make sure that we stay in constant communication. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Regina Waller. Thank you very much. Meanwhile, Fulton's delegation and their elected colleagues are hoping your voter registration information is up to date. Now, if you plan on voting in next month's presidential primary, you need to check the status of your voter registration before the February 24th deadline. 2020 will be another busy election year for Fulton County, its municipalities, the state, and the Department of Registration and Elections is encouraging residents to begin preparing by registering to vote and verifying that registration status. If they're unsure of their status, they can go to the My Voter page at the Secretary of State's website. Um, they can also just go online and register to vote again. They can go, or they can do that at DDS. They can go to the library or City Hall and get a voter registration card and mail that in. Just one week after the February 24th voter registration deadline, early voting for the presidential primary. It begins on March 2nd. The three week period ends March 20th. Now be sure to visit the registration and elections website for exact times and locations. Representatives from the Fulton County Sheriff's Office are warning residents of the return of an old phone scam that's now using a new twist. Here now to tell us all about it is Lieutenant Colonel Adam Lee. Sir, welcome back to Fulton today. Thanks for having me on today. All right, so first things first, briefly explain the details of this phone scam. 
basically the way it works is you get a call from someone claiming to be uh, some from some government agency. In this particular incident, it was someone calling, pret uh, pretending to be Fulton County Sheriff's Office, and they also uh, indicated that their name was my name, which is Adam Lee. Uh, this person told the caller or the potential victim that they owed money or, or they threatened them with an arrest if they didn't pay a certain amount of money. I believe there was one case where they said they missed uh, jail, I mean, missed uh, court. It was court and, or they missed a, an opportunity to serve on a jury. And so by ignoring that, they would be charged with something like contempt of court and if they did not pay a certain amount of money then a warrant would be issued for their arrest. And I understand these scammers have made their setup sound very realistic? Yes, uh, on two occasions the victims called me. Uh, they took the time to call me to authenticate whether or not it was actually me that called and I explained to them that it was not. When we returned the call here from my office there was a voicemail on the phone and it sounded very authentic, very familiar. It was, it was almost, it was like the voice that you would hear when you call someone on their cell phone and there's a female voice that is very familiar to most people or the, the voice of Siri on the Apple uh, applications. So it sounded very professional and it, and it said uh, if you need to speak to, in this particular incident, it said Lieutenant Lee, press one. And at the time, I didn't take it any further. I actually turned over the investigation to our law enforcement unit. And how can folks know that this call that they're receiving really is truly a scam? Law enforcement agencies don't generally call people to threaten them with arrests in exchange for any amount of money. Usually that is done through the mail or in person. They'll actually show up to your house or you will get something in the mail. If this person indicates that, that something was sent to you in the mail, ask or tell them that you didn't receive anything or you don't remember receiving anything, what address did you send it to? And if they can't immediately respond and give you the address that is your address, then that's a good indication that it's gonna be a scam. And sir, wrap it up for me, your final thoughts? Just that, uh, People who feel that they may be a victim of a scam should take the time to, to research it. Like I said, call the number of the official agency uh, that these people are pretending to be. Uh, look it up online. You can look up online and see um, what the actual addresses are to these places. If they should happen to give you a, an address that is not going to be the official address to the organization, that's a big clue or a big red flag that these people are scamming you and always be suspicious of any calls because normally uh, organizations operate through the mail or in person they don't call you and threaten you with arrests for cash lieutenant colonel adam lee always great to see you sir thanks so much for sharing all of this information with our viewers glad to help anytime i can now, if you received one of these scam calls the Lieutenant Colonel described, then you are asked to call the Fulton County Sheriff's Office at 404-612-5100. Meanwhile, a popular jail program is changing the lives of man and his new best friend. Well, when you're done, you ring the bell. Bell? Ring the bell. <laughs> these inmates at the Fulton County Jail are now graduates of the 26th cycle of the canine cellmates program. For seven years, this initiative has positively impacted the lives of the nonviolent offenders and the rescue dogs from the Fulton County Animal Shelter. This program is more centered on the men than it is on the dogs. This program is a rehabilitative program designed to present new ideas and new concepts to these men while they're with us that optimally will allow them to make some different kinds of choices when they leave. And at the same time, we get to save a lot of dogs. Isn't that a wonderful thing? K-9 Cellmates is a 10-week course that provides inmates the opportunity to train and care for a living being and helps them to become more productive members of society. It helped me by shaping my positive reinforcement behaviors. It helped me by capturing them and knowing what 
was stagnating in me in so many ways and, and how to just reshape them. And the rescue dogs who were once abused and neglected, well now they have a better chance to become adopted into a forever home as a result of being trained. It's made a big difference and you can tell from the responses from the participants how this has had impact on their lives and this is what we're trying to do is help them change behavior, turn their lives around so they can be productive citizens and this program has proven that it really works. I think the program is fabulous. It, uh, it combines the, uh, the, 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 the rehabilitation and second chances and coaching that are so important uh, to help individuals who leave the jail lead successful lives. One added bonus of the canine cellmates, according to program organizers, repeated habitual crime rates have declined in prison and jail facilities where dog programs operate sometimes, get this, as much as 50%. Well, a team of Fulton supervisors and managers put a number of county services on public display. The Citizen Service Fair takes place on Thursday, February 20th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. inside the Fulton County Government Center atrium on the Peachtree level. This event is sponsored by the Cohort G Class of the Fulton County Certified Public Manager Program. Our service awareness fair is an opportunity for our citizens, constituents, and colleagues here at Fulton County to learn more about the services that the county provides as far as opportunities for development, opportunities for public assistance, and opportunities to make us better citizens as a whole. Various department representatives will have booths set up to showcase programs, provide resources, and answer all of the questions you may have about the work that the county staffers provide. No registration is required, and the event is free. The Cohort G Class hopes to highlight why Fulton County is a big deal. And still to come, Fulton commissioners continue to stress the importance of the census. We'll explain in our district by district coverage next. Fulton residents get the latest on both the 2020 census and the 2020 county budget in a series of town hall meetings. It's a part of our district by district coverage. We're going to have to rely upon the black church to get the word out. That's been a problem in the past. We began with Chairman Rob Pitts, who kicks off the National Black HIV Awareness Day with community partners and pastors. The at-large commissioner spearheaded a brunch to mark the day in conjunction with HIV AIDS advocates and the AIDS Healthcare Foundation. Our constituents and the congregants must know about uh, this pandemic of AIDS and be aware in terms of being tested and being uh, treated if there is an effect of it and so have the information, the ITT, to ensure that we know and so that we can be on the vanguard to reach the goal of by 2030 to ensure that there are no more new cases of AIDS in our community. The chairman has partnered with local clergy to help advance the message about the HIV AIDS epidemic in the African American community. Over the past almost um, 40 years, I have been involved in this effort since Dream Girls on Broadway. Uh, unfortunately, so sadly, we lost most of our male chorus and cast members and creative staff of, who died of AIDS. And that was back in the early 80s. And it's sad to see that it's still here and that it's still affecting our community. Fulton County has pledged to end all new cases of HIV and AIDS by 2030. District 1 Commissioner Liz Houseman is doing her part to encourage residents to participate in the 2020 census. The North Fulton Commissioner taped a public service announcement to inform citizens about the importance of this once in a decade count. Every 10 years, residents get the opportunity to guide so many decisions in our future. The count of the number of citizens in Fulton County determines how crucial federal dollars are distributed. 
eventually leading to decisions on where schools are built, libraries are built, how health resources are allocated, and so many other crucial community needs. Now, the official Census 2020 day is April 1st. You can check out the county website for more details. And District 6 Commissioner Joe Karn continues a series of town hall community meetings through the month of February. The forums include discussions about the 2020 fiscal year budget, an overview of the county's participation in the 2020 census, and a demonstration of the new voting machines to be implemented by Georgia for the upcoming elections. We wanted to hear from our community more so than anything and listen to their needs, their concerns. Uh, we want our citizens to know that we're listening and we hear you clearly. Uh, we also wanted to let them know the services that we're providing, uh, our budgetary process, uh, our voting machines, which are very important this year, being that it's a major, major presidential election year. You got senatorial seats, house seats, state seats, city seats, county seats. Uh, so uh, you can never get too much information uh, when you have a community meeting. The commissioner will continue with his town hall style meetings this week. Just contact the District 6 office to get details. Now you can catch your commissioners at work all this week with the rebroadcast of the Board of Commissioners meeting right here on FGTV. And when Fulton Today returns, these seniors learn the best tactics to defend themselves. We'll show you. More confirmed cases of the coronavirus around the country has U.S. officials on alert and at the ready, and that includes Fulton's Board of Health and its Emergency Management Agency. FGTV's Melissa Lewis explains. And they're working very hard on getting a vaccine out in the next few months. In a room filled with health care professionals at the Fulton County Board of Health headquarters, the main focus on this day was about one topic, the coronavirus. Fulton's chief clinical officer for medical and preventive services is making sure that county staff is clear on what the virus is and how the Board of Health is actively on guard. We are actively screening people at the airport that are coming in from uh, the source of the infection, Wuhan City, China. Um, and we are doing active surveillance through the hospitals and other health care systems. The coronavirus has even the chairman of the Fulton County Board of Commissioners concerned. He too wanted to hear what the Board of Health was doing regarding the information outreach. According to the Fulton County Board of Health, the novel coronavirus causes severe respiratory illness in people and can spread from person to person. They say while experts are still learning about the range of illnesses from the novel coronavirus, cases so far have ranged from mild illness to severe pneumonia. The symptoms also resemble other illnesses. SARS, MERS, and what we're calling the Wuhan pneumonia syndrome virus, novel coronavirus, um, are all similar. They're all the same type of virus. They started in different parts of the world, but they cause a very similar syndrome of pneumonia, difficulty breathing, and they all have um, the potential to be fatal. Doctors say they are concerned with those who have traveled to China or who have been in contact with those who have traveled to that heavily impacted region. They are also using the opportunity to remind residents to still get the flu vaccine. I recommend that people get their flu shot and just stay abreast of any travel advisories from the CDC before uh, traveling to Southeast Asia. And while Fulton County and the state of Georgia have not had any confirmed cases, the doctor adds to wash your hands often and stay aware in the meantime. Reporting for FGTV, I'm Melissa Lewis. Thank you very much, Melissa. Meanwhile, a number of Fulton County residents once on the wrong side of the law now have a brand new start thanks to the work that they've put in. 115 days of documented cleanup. Fulton County's Accountability Court is pleased to present its winner veteran and drug court graduating class. Each of these court participants faced a criminal charge, but rather than face 
time in jail, they put in the time to complete the strenuous accountability court program to get their lives back on track. It's been like a lifesaver for me. It's gave me a second chance at life. Even at my age, it taught, I learned every, every group section, you know, it's just taught me how to be responsible and, and, and just be accountable, you know, be responsible for your actions and your decisions. You know, with the, gave me the tools to, to fight off all the temptation that might come in my life. So uh, a lot of people say Hope Hall was a failure program, but that's, that's a lie. It's, it, it, it does its job. Judges say accountability courts reduce recidivism for offenders, generates cost savings for taxpayers, and improves public safety for the community. Now, there are a number of accountability court programs in Superior State and Magistrate Courts. Defendants must meet certain criteria for the judge to offer the program as an alternate sentencing option. You can learn more on the county's website. Well, seniors learn special techniques to keep themselves safe. See how, this, see how comfortable it is? This is comfortable. It's com that's comfortable, right? Participants at the HJC Bowden Senior Facility took part in an interactive self-defense class. Taught by one of their peers, the group got lessons in everything from breaking away from an attacker to preventing an assault altogether. I was teaching them uh, the One Touch uh, project. It's a program that uh, for blind and vision impaired uh, veterans, it started off as, but now we do like for women, children, people with cross disabilities, or people that have no disabilities or invisible disabilities. You know, uh, whoever wants to live more freely, be able to connect in the neighborhood, be able to travel more safely, and have some self-esteem or uh, self-improvement, you know, in their life, you know. I learned how to defend myself when someone come in my personal space. So that, that was easy, it's, you know, it's more easy done than what you see. Oh my goodness, it was very, very helpful. I, um, and it was simple techniques that's almost natural, but if you didn't know, you don't know. And so I really, really appreciate uh, him coming and I was one of the first to say, we want you back. Self-defense for seniors provides protection strategies to guard against ever-growing violent acts against the most vulnerable population in the country. To find out when the next class will be at a Fulton County Senior Center, just call the Star Line. And coming up next on Fulton Today, find out why some people are heading to their local libraries now that we've entered tax season. Stay with us. annual free tax filing service is back at Fulton Libraries. The AARP Foundation is hosting a number of tax preparation sites at multiple library branches throughout April 15th. Though there is no cost for the sessions, there is some paperwork that you need to bring, including a copy of your 2018 federal, state, and tax return, all tax year 2019 tax documents, proof of medical insurance, a check, with a home address name for direct deposit, a picture ID, and a social security card for each person on the tax return. It was nice, it was good, it, I mean, it went real smooth. Now, here is a list of the libraries hosting the AARP tax preparation sites. To see the full schedule of dates and times, just log on to AFPLS.org. And finally, the organization that operates the county's animal shelter is ensuring pet owners are still able to care for their pets during tough financial times. The Pets for Life program is a door-to-door -door program for people in the seven lowest income zip codes in Fulton County. The program keeps pets in homes where they are loved and out of the shelter by providing free veterinary care and services to people and pets with limited or non-existent access to pet wellness resources. Now, those resources include free spay and neutering, license tags and leashes, collars and crates. She's a very loving dog, very loving, very supportive, and I don't know what I'd do without her. 
In 2019, the Pets for Life provided over 9,800 free pet services, helped 4,200 total pets, and performed 1,300 free spay neuter surgeries. To learn more, just log on to lifelineanimal.org slash outreach. I love that program. And before we go, our reminder that FGTV wants to connect with you online. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for up-to-date Fulton County news. You can also watch a replay of this show or any other FGTV program anytime on our YouTube channel. So please do us a favor and subscribe. Well, that does it for this edition of Fulton Today. Thank you so much for watching. Join us each week for news around and about Fulton County.